Hello, hello. I'm not sure if any of you are here yet. I think I'll start to see you pop up soon. Um, I'll confess, this is my first live video. Uh, so I'll vamp for a few minutes. We'll have a chance to join. Um, thank you to all of you who are here now or are going to watch this meeting later. Uh, I appreciate your support. Uh, I'll do this again later, but for the sake of you at home, this is available now from LSU Press. Uh, they are taking orders. Um, I'm at the point where every day feels like the day before it a little bit, um, maybe slightly different, but really not all that different. Um, and so uh, I'm glad to have this opportunity to share my work. This will be the first time I've read from Romances as a physical object. Um, it was a project that I did almost eight years ago, and so I'm very excited to be here. Um, and the other day we got takeout and my fortune cookie said, a touch of love, Ooh. everyone becomes it. So that's the theme for this reading. Um, I should say too that the book itself is a project that revolves in great around the courtly love tradition. So I want to say a little bit about that before I read the poems. Um, you may know uh, that it started with the doors in medieval France. Um, people who would sing to an unavailable and often cruel mess. And I said people, but I really meant men. There are some um, female trobarites, but I'm not certain if they are a myth or um, truly were active then. Um, at the same time, courtly romances, uh, persons of the novel, uh, were starting in southern France. Um, and then these themes of this unavailable mistress, were themes that um, got picked up by Dante, by Petrarch, uh, by the Italians, and then after them, uh, such Renaissance writer uh, writers, uh, occasionally in parody, but sometimes uh, reenacting those uh, tropes, uh, their own mistresses. So Thomas Wyatt, for example. So the first section of the book definitely uh, engages with the tradition. There's poems. Uh, Dante's wife, who was not the person he wrote to, would have thought about this, um, thinking about uh, Petrarch's beloved Laura, uh, uh, who died of the plague, unfortunately enough, and then Anne Lynn. Um, but I'm going to start from the second section, uh, which is called The Toxic Unrequited Suite, and it, it acts the same kinds of moves that the courtly does, but in a contemporary context. And uh, just because it seemed kind of fun. And so um, I'll read two poems from that section to start. So this is Lady Pygmalion. And um, it kind of revolves around the idea of the narcissistic uh, approach to love, uh, especially infatuation, I should say, specifically. So, you know, you look, look at a person, you don't really know them well, and you're just projecting onto them these ideal qualities, which is what the troubadours did. So, um, this is the Pygmalion. I made you in my image, curio, old-fashioned unsmiling face, a ring of seashells, something to gaze at when I got lonely. The sunset was bland. You were barnacle-covered and moth-laden, but smelled so sweet. The sea gone bad and then good. Not fish, but coconut slathered in sun, plus salt. Your hair shaded your face quite right. I remade you, three diamonds colored in the cheekbones and did a spot check. Your facial features mimicked mine, the ratio of nose line to eye. Your torso archaic when I took down the head to shine the eyes, which went dull with dust every month. I paced and oats behind them. You were agreeable. When you finished, the mirror said I was a sack tied loose to a stake. Sleeves coming apart at the seam, raw ripe for bird beaks, their precarious nests in the a single abandoned blue egg heard on the sidewalk that seemed injured but flew away fine i don't need to know what kind it was pigeon dove when it's gone anyway small orb wrapped tinsel and tape little creature inside scratching something can't understand thank you uh to allison pellegrin who's enjoying this on her walk 
Um, thank you, Julie and Phoebe and Darby. Um, next, I'm going to read uh, a second poem section, and this one has a um, uh, epigraph from Shakespeare, 147. My love is as a fever, longing still for that which longer nurseth disease. My weak constitution. You're the hectic in my blood, the bacteria in my spoon, the heated remnants of my appendix curdling in my gut. But I despise you. I ferret you out like the bottom of your shoes, morsel of a leaf, soil, salty rain, spit shine them clean. Like coon on trash night with his little people hand, you can rummage through my cans unimpeded. I'll take cytoxin, bubblegum flavored, and sweat you out the next time or the next. So um, the section of the book started from a misunderstanding. Uh, I was studying the courtly love tradition as part of my Bible exams, but when I told people that, if I didn't enunciate, and they were of a certain age, they thought of Courtney Love, the 1990s grunge rocker, married a curtain and a strong artist in her own right. Um, I joked once that I should write a sonnet to Courtney, Courtney Love, and why not? Um, so uh, there are about one poems, um, mostly sonnets, one double sonnet. It's a round of sonnets. They don't connect closely in that way. But I'm going to read sections of it. Um, each of them are from Courtney and Kurt's relationship, but um, and uh, especially involving his suicide. But don't the poems don't all relate to their relationship? Um, it's a constellation of relationships in her life. Some of it enacting those same courtly themes of unavailability. So um, start with uh, section five, cliff over Waikiki. You wore pajamas to our wedding, blue checked, comfortable rare Avis, and after the vows, after the sunset kiss, we held pink flowers, shedding those gender roles we made. I did don a gauzy gown, masked by the wind, but I didn't care about being the bride. I was that other bird curled inside me to be born. In our photos, my face is solemn. You grin, Beatory prodigy. We wouldn't celebrate our third anniversary. I'd read your suicide note with its messed up grace to our gathered guests, lonely liturgy. Uh, this section is number eight. It's called Horseman, um, and it references um, Kurt's drug addiction and um, eventual death. Horseman, you wound me, dear, with your cornflower eyes and your blonde stringed hair and your two-toned 20-gauge shotgun. You bring me along when you travel abroad, but that girl, death, finds you singing in Rome, gives you pill, 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 tells you oblivion is better. That harpy gives you a horse with fierce gallop, and you see saddle and spurs. You ride to a greenhouse where the flowers aren't yet, and bury your fingers in humus. And where is my bonny lad, and why aren't I with him, and where is his dear daughter? You leave me a note under one flower pot to tell me the hell hag was right. And uh, this is section 10. The graph is Kedebiofar, which is from Petrarch, and it means, which is the title, What Shall I Do? The worst faking it, he said, and died. Full moon, my gentle combat. He could medicate with smack, the band and angst, nearly stumble on a high head and still kiss his daughter goodnight. His hands signed, filled, delicate acrobats, but it looked like an A chord. Understand he kept secrets of a diplomat. But I injected him with a can to bring him back before a show. I called the cops the my tune when he unlocked the door. No one would get me free. Oh, death, your sting is nothing. You in the mountaintops in fog, but I croon Lolo Encore. Thank you um, to those of you who have said hello. It's good to see some familiar places. My sister-in-law, a co-worker, um, and wonderful strangers who I'm glad to meet in this context. Um, again, this is Romance Press. Um, 
who are sending orders out. Um, I'm about at the halfway point, um, and I wanted to say, uh, so the first few sections definitely deal with that kind of the love tradition that's an imbalanced one, where uh, the person uh, speaking has all the power, uh, the per person is described as unavailable and doesn't have to speak. And um, I'm going to read a few sections, a few poems section, which shows a more mutual love. Um, and uh, also bring some references, as you'll hear. So I'll start with vows which is an epithalamium, and I read uh, a version of it much longer at my wedding, which um, is almost nine years ago now. Vows. You hauled me out of bed, wires and tubes, too weak to stand. Walked when I moved so slowly, you joked, going backward. It was no repayment when I helped you sling an elbow, your arm curled, wing, and body. There's no ledger, no balance. We can't speed the collagen hardening into noon. I can open the blinds before you arrive home, give you words, this earnest thing, vow to walk with you, forward or backward, over black eye, hospital tire, hospital tile, tire. All right, the next poem is um, reading Don Quixote on our honeymoon. And it references reading Don Quixote on a honeymoon, which will be rather cool. Um, and that uh, full novel mocks the courtly ro romance to a masterful degree. Um, and it's a special experience to read it in Cancun. So, Don Quixote on our honeymoon. Dulcinea does not, cannot read, but I, I beachside in a brown two piece at ease and Cancun. The carmine cover, though, is embarrassing. Being helmet with gorget to protect the neck. You layered lotion on yours because even the morning sun is relentless. We've stolen a reserved but not hide haven under a thatch palapa. The other couple down slushy drinks at the clear chlorinated pool or, or ensconced in the stone floored cool rooms we all treat to. The ocean is azure. Sky, cerulean, the sand white, all opening their roles with gusto. But I fire like some medieval woman winnowing wheat. My hair is ridiculous, waves amplified by humidity. After an oceanfront massage, I feel only faint and dehydrated. Activity is the greatest evil that can befall men, the book's man tells his friend. And here you are, yoked to me. Sit alone for 20 minutes, send you to the ATM on your own, return to the woebegone night. The beloved insurer is a construct. The one next to you in paradise has the vinyl lounge chair stuck to her back with sweat. All right, I want one more from this section, and it's the final poem in the book, which was the final poem written. And about it, that it's one of the few poems that engages with our contemporary ter uh, term romance and novels, uh, which you'll see. Uh, uh, and it, um, what else do I want to say about it? I think that's it. I think it should be pretty clear. This is the story's end. The Harlequins I read, read is seethed with heat, with heat, but folded closed with the wedding and gaudy honeymoon balcony sunset. Honey, we're growing older in the unimagined afterward. Your bones mend slowly or not at all. Pinky weeks, elbows slinged from a slick February. Nothing the doctor but put them in the posture of healing. And I'm tired, my less red than it should be. My stomach where the drain was sewn in. Navel rebuilt twice after lapis. In the sentimental ending to our story, the wine from tea leaves. We expire spontaneously in sleep, our bodies transforming into bees that for a new hive. Neither of us left alone to pay the other territorial bill. In medieval tales, the lover's remains drift off toward the watery horizon on a skiff or blossom into honeysuckle twined with hazel. In those romances, the story varies 
we but i fear our final pages are more like living wills and insurance policies in the meantime worry pits into the same bowl we'll watch romantic comedies go to bed at 10. as i fall asleep i'll imagine one possible variant and in our shared afterlife you ride a harley your bucket list steed interlands i write in a scented lakeside garden are gone, ready with the saga's next installment. Our cycle rumbles back down the drive. I will confess, I have not encouraged my husband to buy a motorcycle as a joke between the two of us. Um, I want to say that I feel like there aren't very good romantic comedies anymore. So, so if you know good, decent, recent comedies, please let us know. Um, I'll, I should also so there will be um, uh, some time questions at the end. Um, so you could hear in that poem kind of a, a reference to mortality and how it intertwines with love in unexpected ways. And uh, the final two poems I want to read, which are from the section, um, discuss the kind of question of love in the face of different a different valence of love, um, different kind of romance, not romantic in the same way. And the first is Gilding the Lily. This is from a former friend who um, died of ovarian cancer in 2009. And when she was going through chemotherapy and the other sorts of treatment uh, that she um, had, she gave us a list of preferred terms. Some of the terms used caused her a lot of anxiety and uh, changing the language helped her. So this is gilding the lily. Oh, and uh, some of the the phrases at the end that you'll hear are names of roses, um, which was the name of my friend. To keep anxiety at bay, my friend called chemo dragonfly love. Those insects christened in places the devil's darning needles, are, as they contort their joined bodies into a heart. The male with pincers, finger cutter, horse killer ear. Pisser, look closely at the eyes of a female darner and you'll see dark puncture marks. As a slow drip through an IV, as a pill through a port into a vein, she called nausea erotica. Just the same we need storms to lessen them, not a tropical cyclone, but Arabella, play shoes and bun. Tumors too were orphans, waiting at the bus stop with backpacks in the morning. Cindy French carries hair, yanking at the scalp to form the tight crystal. Not hair loss, but deep conditioning. She gave us the con on stationary embossed with a red rose circled by raindrops. The stem still had its thorns. The rosy, red rover, red rover, send her right over. She called the world of 10,000 things. The dragon in his damsel, catheter tubing in the waste bin, video of inviting his brother, pasta do, full sugar ice cream, crimson trumpeter, red knockout, Tuscany superb. I knew her as Rose Shapiro. At the funeral, I learned born Pasalakwa to cross the river, to pass us of water. I will say that's my um, inexpert translation of her name. Uh, when I read this poem in St. Louis several years ago, and a friend, a, a common friend was there. He told me that uh, she would joke, maybe it wasn't a joke, that, that to pa Pasalakwa, to pass water, also meant something that you might do in your bathroom, say. Uh, and that was Rose. Like, that is the kind of, of thing that she would say. So, um, I think the, yes, the, to the gravity of the poem out to say that. Um, that's what she would want to say. All right. Um, this is my final poem, and then I will um, uh, be open for I'm trying to scroll through, but also keep my eye on um, the clock and, and the, the book, which again is Romance Unless You Press. Buy it from your favorite independent bookstore that's shipping or, or Unless You Press because their warehouse is sending out orders. The final poem that I'm going to read is um, dedicated to f two friends of mine, a couple. Um, they had a three year old and had just had a baby. She was maybe six weeks old, maybe nine weeks. And the husband of the couple had a stroke in the 30s. And um, he survived and went through an enormous amount of rehab and is one of the hardest working people I know. 
Um, and uh, I, I want to imagine their experience, um, but also holding on to it, uh, Eurydice, Eurydice, yes, um, you know, if, if Orcus were the one, the singer, as my friend was, to be uh, or hurt or ill, um, what would be Eurydice's experience? So this is Eurydice in the ICU waiting room. This time he was the one who tried to slip under. No viper fanged with poison, no coterie of sharp pain, but vertigo, a headache, brain and by a bleed. Winter sidewalks go slats from underground heat, sewer breath, that inconsequential death holding a fiddle he can't play. Just blink. Love is here, girded with tubes and wires. Men with their small saws opened his skull, relieved the people with a shunt. He will, with shaved head and his voice box, require a wheelchair, a walker, to come back to you. This enthrallment, just a number, another to pass through. I feel like kind of in a sort of limbo right now. Um, so that seemed like a, a good place to end. Um, I'll, I'll leave a minute in case someone wants to write a question comments, but I also want to say that I hope that you all keep poetry and um, hearing poetry. Uh, there's been a wonderful of these sorts of uh, reading available. Um, and I want to say that this is just the beginning uh, what will be a series from LSU Press. So keep your eye out for other remote author readings. Um, and and uh, yes, I also, uh, for those of you who joined late, I want to show you um, something I got as a fortune cookie takeout the other night. This is making me dizzy. At the touch of love comes a poet. So um, that's been the theme. Um, here, I'll give, there might be a question. If not, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to say much love from Ohio.